It's been a long road, and I'm glad to have had you all with me. But it's time we start bringing this game to an end. So join me once more as we start our ascent up the Tower of Fate. As usual, I have a new set of armor. Before I explain what it is, though, I just want to show off for posterity's sake that there is an extra screen back here to the left. That's just a trouble fish down there, so I'm not going to waste time spending time fishing it up. This armor is the Mail of Momentum. Now, while the Final Guard basically served me no purpose, this armor would actually be my least favorite one. With the Mail of Momentum, the knockback I receive from taking damage is greatly reduced. So as you can see, is if I take damage from these gears, I barely move back at all. Since this armor is so heavy though, it actually takes Shovel Knight longer to come to a stop if I let go of the control pad, and he skids a bit when I attempt to change directions on the ground. It's something you can sort of see, but it's definitely more of a feeling thing. Now, I don't like this armor very much, because it really messes with my internalized controls. I've played this game for so long that I know Shovel Knight's physics, and this armor just throws that all out the window for very little benefit. I can see this armor being useful if you're the type of player that is constantly getting knocked backwards into pits, but this armor doesn't just do nothing for me, it actually kind of gets in the way. So hopefully it doesn't screw me up too much. The beginning of this level, while nothing particularly special in a vacuum, is actually one of my favorite sections in the game. Because this opening stretch is... Oh, jeez. Sorry, those propeller rests did not line up properly for me. Uh, the opening stretch of the stage is heavily inspired by the first Wily stage in Mega Man 2. And that stage is not only very iconic, but Mega Man 2 in general was a very formative game for me. So this callback is just something that really warms my heart. Now you can probably tell, but this stage is finally the point in the game where it's really starting to combine many aspects of the older stage into one. We had Mole Knight's fire things that jump out of the pits, we had uh, King Knight's magic book and those fire pots, and then here we have Plague Knight's minions throwing potions at us. It just really sets the mood for we are in the end game, and it feels good. I've said this about a couple other things, but once again, no retro platformer is complete without a smusher section. I would definitely argue this is one of the trickier segments in the game. You really have to be quick on your feet and be careful, and this armor is definitely not going to help me in that regard. It just it feels so wrong. I'm sorry, I'm probably going to complain about this armor several times. I don't know. Uh, it's just something I can't really get around. I don't like this armor. So I really want you guys to pay attention not to this room, but the next one, because it's where we're finally going to meet the last of the Kickstarter backer creations. Where four of the five backers chose to make bosses, the last one opted to make, in my opinion, one of the coolest enemy types in the game. These are the Liquid Samurai. You can't really see their liquidity on these two that are attacking us, but you can see it on the one in the top left hanging off the ceiling. Oh, and this one who is now scurrying along the ground. I just think these guys are super cool. They're aesthetically creative, yet they still fit the feel of the game. I really like the contrast of a knight battling a samurai, and plus I just feel evil, which fits this level. They're also quick and tough to fight, which is an appropriate challenge for this part of the game. And already we have a new type of liquid samurai. These guys have bows. It's pretty straightforward. Just like any other projectile, you can hit it back at them. 
but that is one of the faster projectiles in the game, so be careful. I'm really botching this one projectile. Uh, I could go get that health down there. That's uh, kind of a long ways around, and there'll be a bit of health a little bit later. I really love this section of the level for a couple of reasons. The most obvious is because of the whole silhouette thing it has going on. It's a lot like the darkness in Spectre Knight stage, but less because it's trying to hinder you and more just because it looks really, really cool. Uh, what this is really good about doing is masking what color the enemies are. Now on paper that doesn't sound like a big deal, but think back to how many palette swaps of enemies we've seen throughout the course of the game. So that knight who's further up ahead, I have no idea what color he is, so I don't know what abilities he has, until I engage him in combat and find out, oh, he's a blue knight, he can throw armor. Or not armor. Anchors. I just think it's a neat way to introduce a new challenge without really making anything about the enemies unnecessarily harder. These enemies still take the same amount of hits, they still do the same amount of damage, and they still have the same abilities. Like, they aren't going to cheat and give the anchor throwers a pogo attack. It's just an interesting way an old mechanic can be reused in a new way. They also make use out of these silhouettes for level design. For example, if you pay close attention to the raindrops hitting the ground here, you can actually tell that whatever is casting a shadow here is actually in the foreground, so I can just go ahead and drop on in. I can also just ignore these guys entirely. On top of all this, the effect is just really beautiful. Uh, the first time I played Shovel Knight, I played it on a 3DS. And let me tell you, they don't really do a whole lot with 3D in that game, but this green rain looks absolutely spectacular. Just, I really can't put it into words. It's fantastic. And so we have the climactic fight against Black Knight. This is honestly probably my favorite fight in the whole game, though it's not overly hard. Black Knight still has a lot of the same moves as he used to, just souped up. As you can tell, he now goes absolutely bonkers when firing Shadow Bolts, though the strategy there is still the same. He'll try to impose aerial advantage over you as well, but where it gets really over the top is when he sprouts wings and starts to fly around. In this form, though, he's very vulnerable to charge attacks, so it can be a quick way to get in lots of damage. When he tires of your shenanigans, he'll put on his best JRPG end boss moves and try to smush you with meteors, the last ones hitting the ground becoming an obstacle. These burning husks of rock will damage me if I touch them, though I can also pogo off of them for extra height. I'm not the only one who can pogo off them though, which Black Knight will be more than happy to show off once he's done teleporting around. Nah, here we go. If Black Knight pogos on a meteor, he sends halves of it flying across the screen. This can come out pretty quick, so until you've really learned the timing of it, you're probably going to get smacked by it a few times. Or you can just pogo off whatever meteor still remains. Whatever works for you. This boss fight is just super cool. The rival fights come to an end with triumphant yet hectic music set up against a wonderful background that is totally eating my video bitrate alive. But most importantly, through conversations with him, we finally start to piece together just a little bit more of what backstory they share. Pretty soon, it'll all make sense. <laughs> 